first challenge of this week, got to tidy the shed. It's an absolute catastrophe at the moment. And, and we've just been like opening the door and putting things in, you know, when you just end up with like a wall of stuff. So that's challenge number one. space we've got in here now <laughs> all the tools are back on their correct hooks which is a joy underneath admittedly is still a little bit of a, a mess but at least I know where all the mess is now I know where everything is in there chicken stuff is at that end and all of this clean work surface all I've got to do now is put the onions back in here because they're busy drying in here and uh shed's good to go I am covered in spider webs and dust. Hello, Lily Malou. Where have you been all morning, Pussycat? Where have you been all morning, that Pussycat? We missed you, didn't we, girlies? We did. Well, that is about all I came up here to do this morning, actually. That is a big tick on my to-do list to sort that shed out because, oh, you know when it gets overwhelmingly messy and you just walk in and you're just like, oh, and then close the door again. That's what it's been like, but now it's palatial again. <laughs> Anyway, that's all I came up here for, but I've got something very exciting to show you at the other end of the plot. Yeah, have a look at this. It's very exciting. So this is our fig tree, which is a little joy. No, I still haven't fixed the side of the gate, but look at this. Hang on, I've got to go out and round to show you. Look at the beauty. It's ready. I'm gonna go and get mum. We're gonna pick it 
and we're probably going to eat it. This is the first one of the year. big ones on that side and look we've got tons of babies again yeah. but maybe if we don't have a shitty in fact that one look that one's about to go it's just darkening now mm. Mm. Oh, it's so sweet it's like it's got sugar on it tidy shed first fig it's not a bad day <laughs> We're off now. See you tomorrow. The sun is out and there are butterflies everywhere this morning and I am planting French beans. So these are the French beans that I sowed just the other day, the dwarf ones, they're not climbers, they were a purple dwarf bean and as you can see they are quite tall. There's about two in each pot, some of them have only got one but I don't think I put more than two seeds in each pot so and have we got, and um, we've got something out of every pot. So that is pretty good. I'm gonna get them in the bed today. I also have an enormous amount of stuff in here, which could either go straight into the beds like uh, the beetroot, which is ready to go straight in, but also a lot of stuff which needs potting up into individual pots to grow on a little bit before I can send it out. Although the red Russian kale is looking lovely. Yeah, but like I say, first job of the day, is the beans. Just grab the hori hori, gratuitous picture of the onions because I still give them a good stare every time I come in here. I mean, look at that, it's so beautiful, so beautiful. Mm. Right, yes, hori hori. Huzzah. I think I might plant all of these in this end of the bed and then I can always sow some more because they grow so fast if we wanted some more. They did very well. I don't know. Are they, are they late, late fruiting? They're not late fruiting but they're dwarfs so they go really fast. You can sow them all the way up until the end of August.
quite uh, tall, sort of leggy, and I could have planted them much deeper, but I find that the deeper they're planted, so the closer the foliage is to the ground, the quicker the slugs completely destroy them. So I've planted them actually quite shallow in the hopes that we avoid slug damage. I know I've just flattened them, but they'll stand up fine. <laughs> Okie dokie, next quite exciting thing for the day. Sorry, I'm trying to talk to you and I'm standing here, the pond is behind me and I keep hearing these big plop noises. So something is jumping in the pond, but I keep missing it. <laughs> no, it's not revealing itself. Right, do you remember last Christmas I uh, was given a drone for Christmas. Well, <laughs> it was a drone with a camera so that I can connect it to the phone and film like above the allotment. Now I've brought it out a couple of times to give it a go. And every time it's either started raining or it's suddenly become like a hurricane and blowing a gale and it's sort of flying all over the show. And also I'm not a fantastic drone driver, it turns out. <laughs> anyway, it's a really good day today and I brought it up with me, so we're going to have a go. Wish me luck. Okie dokie chaps, introducing the Holy Stone HS260, preparing for takeoff. Well, it looks really weird, it looks like they're not spinning in this. Well, it didn't land in the pond or my neighbor's pond and it's still in one piece but that is going to take a little bit of practice i think before you start seeing majestic sweeping drone shots of the allotment <laughs> anyway let's get on with something useful I like them so much <laughs> and they're in the way <laughs> in the way 
think? Well, after the wild success of the onions last week, we're going to be brave and uh, see what's going on in the garlic that we've grown in pots. So we grow it in pots because last year we didn't get a single garlic clove because it all had white rot and it was just like digging up stenching garlic mush. Mum's making a lovely racket folding bags while I'm talking. Sorry about that. I still don't have a microphone. <laughs> so yeah, we're going to dig up the garlic. So we've been growing the garlic in these kind of troughs outside the greenhouse. As you can see, they are covered in rust. <laughs> uh, and I'm not really sure what's going to be under the ground there, but they are very tired and uh, obviously quite ready to come out. A um, couple of them have produced scapes that I've missed. So we've got some proper like old flower spikes in here. But yeah, overall, I think all of this stuff is ready to be turfed out. Fingers crossed for something underneath there. Right, are you ready? <laughs> yes. Ooh, woohoo! And it's rock solid, is it? Yeah. found our first squishy one but it is not from um, white rot it's actually just got loads of tiny little slugs inside it they're really really small the whole thing's really like soft and the uh, neck has rotted off and it's just full of slugs little teeny tiny slugs <laughs> look at it I mean that's really small can you see it hmm but yeah, other than this one, um, no soft garlic. So I am incredibly pleased. This one's gross.
So you see we're faffing around with the soil that the garlic has grown in. We're actually going to use that um, as our potato compost. And I know it's not traditional time to sow potatoes, but I was in the allotment shop the other day and they had a whole load of potatoes that were left over from like earlier in the year that never sold. Let me grab them one sec. So yeah, I picked up two bags. They're swift, which is quite uh, normally a first early potato. I mean, these poor chaps, they have been in a bag all that time. And like, this is not normally the ideal way to plant a potato when they look like this, but I'm gonna give it a go anyway. Um, and I, so people do grow Christmas potatoes, obviously, and they normally put them in about the end of August, I think is normally the time, end of August, and then they're harvesting them for Christmas. Well, these are probably not gonna be Christmas potatoes. We're a bit earlier than that, but I think it's worth a try. Particularly since we're gonna plant them in pots, we've already got the compost, so they're not gonna be taking up any space in our um, like proper beds. So they're not gonna be taking away from anything. And um, we got them. I mean, I wasn't even charged for them. Uh, this is at um, not on our site, but you know where we pick up the compost from. They also sell lots of bits and pieces like vermiculite and seeds and things and bamboo canes, which is something I keep forgetting to buy. Uh, but yeah, they had these and we're going to give them a go. Now, the problem is when you're growing potatoes like this, I mean, they always say, you know, when you chit them, I know there's a big debate about whether you should chit or not chit. Uh, I'm not going into that now, but this is well beyond chitting. And these uh, little or huge um, growths are going to be incredibly fragile so when you plant that um, normally they've just got the little eyes are starting to you know produce a tiny bit of growth these are going to be really really delicate so you're just going to have to be a bit more careful with them so yeah we're going to just use that compost that the garlic was in mix in a bit of grow more and uh, pop these up i've got two bags of them though so i might need more pots than i've already got out <laughs> When we filled up these troughs originally to plant the garlic in, the soil we used was a mixture of uh, shop-bought peat-free compost, you know, bagged stuff, and also uh, kind of split about a third with our own compost out of the compost bin. So it was pretty good quality soil and it's not going to have lost everything, but I have mixed in a bit of grow more um, to try and replenish it after the garlic has stripped most of the goodies out of it. But that should be absolutely fine for the potatoes. We will give them a bit of a feed as long as they've got enough water they should be happy as Larry. I'm planting two of these potatoes in these actually quite small pots, but it seems it's a bit of a gamble and we don't really know how well they're gonna do. And we've got a lot of potatoes to get in, two bags of them. Uh, I'm going to put two in each of these because otherwise we will have a whole field worth of potato pots and we don't need that. <laughs> So that is the first two or well, first four potatoes in in two pots. We've used about um, half of the garlic compost. I would say that we've just taken the garlic out of and we've also going to be using the compost that we're taking the potatoes that have been growing in already out of. So as we're freeing up more compost, we'll plant more potatoes, have a bit of a succession and see how they go. Normally that size pot is a one potato pot, but we've got a lot of those potatoes and uh, we don't have a huge number of pots. So I just bunged two in each of those pots and we'll see. And I've just shoved them around here, around the back of the greenhouse where we had the other potatoes in pots growing. <sighs> and we'll see what happens to them. Right now I've got to cut the roots of those garlic and see what we've actually got. Um, or not all of them, but you know, enough so that we can see what we've got.
Do you want to hold the bag open, Mum, and I'll tip it? I'm mainly cutting these roots off just because I want to have really good airflow around the garlic while it's drying out and there is a lot of root on here. I'm not chopping them off entirely, I'm leaving about an inch, inch and a half on each one but I just want to have really good airflow and this is just a huge mass of roots so I'm just tidying them up a little bit. Normally you wouldn't tidy them up until you've actually like cured them and don't chop the stem off your garlic until it's dried out really nicely. If I remember rightly, all of the garlic that I grew this year was all hard neck. I like the hard neck ones because they give you the scapes, which are the flower stems. Although I do appear to have missed two this year and they've turned into proper like flowers. <laughs> but I did eat a lot of the scapes earlier on in the year when they first started producing and they are so good. But yes, I think this is all hard neck garlic and hard neck garlic doesn't store as well as soft neck. Soft neck is a real one for storage. I've taken out any of the ones that da are damaged, obviously that dreadful slug mess one but there were a couple in there which were just a bit I've taken them out I'm going to eat them immediately back at home and the rest of these I'm just going to give them a bit of space in the shed let them dry out with the onions I'll put them in the same box as the onions and um, hopefully we'll have garlic I tend to grow the hard neck well firstly like I say for the scapes but also we're never going to grow enough garlic to um, provide us with garlic all year round a bit like with the onions and so hard neck's absolutely fine because it doesn't store that well but if I really did want to kind of be self-sufficient in garlic I would definitely grow soft neck because you're able to store it for just so much longer the hard neck stuff just doesn't store that well but seems we don't have enough of it to store it doesn't matter I'm so happy I'm so happy and not uh, even a hint of white rot nothing look at these no they're not huge although I would say that we got a couple of quite big ones and all of the ones that are like a proper decent size came from the polystyrene box which I think um, I mean the polystyrene box was advantageous in two ways firstly it was closer to the front so where we were watering I reckon it probably got more water because it's positioning and I'd kind of stack them up and you know what it's like the ones at the back just never get the same amount of water even if you really like are thinking about it um but also it being a polystyrene box rather than just being like the other one was oh hold on like the other one was in a crate you know so it's got like big gaps on the side and um it was just lined with um like weed proof matting you know like the felty stuff um and I think that just ripped the moisture out of it so I think the other ones that are really quite diddy I mean, I'm still quite pleased with them, <laughs> I've got to admit. The ones that are like this sort of size, they all came out of the box that was less watered and uh, less able to retain its moisture. So yes, lesson of the day, kids, water your garlic. <laughs> I should have watered it a lot more than I did. I really should have, same with the potatoes, but I didn't and I can't go back on it now. So anyway, garlic, very, very happy. This was all one variety that went into two of the tubs and then I had a second variety which was a pink one, which as you can see has not done a huge amount, but the cloves look really good. And that's something I'm really happy about is that they've actually separated because a couple of years, like between the Allium leaf miner, which I'm gonna say I haven't actually seen any in here yet, but between the Allium leaf miner and the white rot, um, not only does the garlic rot out, but even if we catch it before it's actually rotted, like they haven't split, the cloves haven't split. And I reckon of all of these, everything is split and not one of them is rotten. So I am very, very happy. Just doing the old allotment stroll, you know, walking around, having a look at things. Uh, gonna have to do a plot tour next week because so much is coming on since the last one I did. So much. That's gonna be next week, chaps. Righty ho, we have some picking to do before we go home today. We have got, oh no, it's not this arch. <laughs> Bit premature there. We have got a cucumber down here that is coming home with us today. That one at the bottom. 
that one lovely we have a patty pan under there that's coming home with us and a couple of courgettes also have a round courgette just up there so i'm gonna go and get the snips Okay, that is four down, one to go. The um, round one is the other patch of courgettes. Look at this, beauty, although it's been eaten. <laughs> it's still gorgeous. And the peppermint chard has recovered so well. You know, this one's the one that just got completely got by the birds. The tomatoes are looking good. This is my other patch of courgettes. And there is a big, fat, round one just in there. Also for the dinner tonight, we need some rosemary and some oregano and then oh, 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 the excitement never stops. <laughs> I stuck my head in the polytunnel earlier and I noticed there are a couple of sun gold cherry tomatoes ready and these are going to be the first ones of 2023. Peak excitement. <laughs>
this way. Keep going. Cheers chaps. I tell you what, there's nothing to make time feel like it's seriously flying than doing a vlog once a week on a schedule like that. It's just the weeks just whiz past. It's outrageous. <laughs> outrageous. Anyway, this week, some successes. The garlic, sorry, I look like I've got a mark right there on my head, but a couple of freckles have joined together and yeah now it looks like i've got a mark on my head but it's just freckles there's nothing i can do about it <laughs> yeah anyway um yeah garlic great success had quite a lot of fun with the drone although yeah quite quite a few crashes i'm not a great driver of drones it appears but you know a bit of practice and hopefully we're going to get some really beautiful sweeping shot up the path it was quite good i got under the arches a couple of times i did prune the beans a little bit <laughs> but not not to the extent that I like chopped them off which is what I was most worried about and I've just found that actually in the box that the holy stone came with that's the dream um, uh, it has like guards on the end of the blades that I can attach so that's going to protect my plants in case I go careering into something and behead them which would be just <laughs> that would be annoying that would be really annoying so yeah, I'm gonna put those on and I'm gonna keep practicing and hopefully we're gonna get some really good, because I get a lot of people asking about actually like the size of the plot and the layout of it, because obviously it's quite difficult to tell um, from sort of what I'm filming. I do have a map of the plot um, on my website, although the website, I hasten to add, is looking a little sad at the moment. Um, but that's a challenge. That was something I wanted to get done in July and we're now two thirds of the way through July and I haven't done it. So I'm gonna get on that. I'm gonna get on that and I'll just put the, the updated because the picture that I've got on there still doesn't have um, the new fruit trees and where I've moved the compost bins to and everything so I have to update that but yeah hopefully what I'm trying to say is hopefully we're going to get some really good aerial shots of the allotment in the coming weeks yeah as long as I don't fly the thing into the pond so what else has been happening this week I did a bit of so I, another thing I get asked about a lot is whether or not I could carry on doing the cooking that I used to do um, and you might have just seen actually when I was pouring myself this inches the um, kitchen is still in an absolute disaster zone we've got no floor in there and so filming in there is so so difficult because every time you move the camera moves because all the floors aren't even and we've just got OSB board down there like on temporary joists so and all of the cupboard doors have been taken off it's just chaos and do you remember do you remember before Christmas and I was like oh I do hope they get it done before Christmas day <laughs> little did I know it would be July and it still wouldn't be done fantastic but that means that I really uh, I've tried to film a couple of cooking bits and pieces but um, it's so tricky in there and uh, I did actually do a bit there is a cooking video that uh, Liz Zora bought out um, for her by the farm um, collaboration so JB's on it as well which was nice I didn't know he was going to be on it I was watching it I was like ah, JB um, <laughs> so yeah which is about if you've got too much too many courgettes which um, although we've only just started picking I've already got the courgette fear uh, but the video is like a whole load of us all talking about all the different things that we do with our courgettes 
when we've got too many and mine is uh, stuffing courgettes and uh, three ways and I did manage to film it although a lot of the video that I had to cut out was just the camera like doing this I was just like oh, absolutely infuriating and it reminded me why I'm not doing cooking videos but I promise the moment we have a stable floor and some cupboard doors and the, 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 the oven so we've got that really big range in there you know like it's a, a really solid oven it's like a tank well it's falling into the floor so everything you cook all the sauces at one side of the frying pan at the moment so it's not ideal it is not ideal <laughs> it's brilliant it's absolutely brilliant come on we've got to get that sorted insurance claims is just a nightmare Hmm. Anyway, all I was trying to say there is that Liz has got a good video and I'll put the link underneath. Now, I had a couple of people say that they couldn't find the link to the little green pots that I put on, not last week, I think it was the week before. Um, and I was like, that's weird because I just put it right at the top there so it's easy to find. So I was thinking, well, perhaps these people aren't very good at like finding the things. And then when I looked, I hadn't put it on there at all. It was in my um, copy and paste notes, but I hadn't actually put it in there. So it's entirely my fault. I apologise. I will put it in the video, this one, and I will go back and put it in that one. Sorry. Entirely my fault. Please accept my apologies. <laughs> it's underneath here, I promise. Along with the link to Liz's video. bit hot and sweaty actually but we've got a couple of weeks of rain coming up again um but it's, it's kind of good doing a good balance although i do want a bit more sunshine to ripen the tomatoes particularly the ones in the back garden i've got a couple in pots out here and they're just not getting any sun nothing at all <laughs> so i don't really know how the tomatoes are going to go this year but yeah next week is going to be a plot tour and i'm also going to do a bit of what we've got going on in the back garden here so i'll have a bit of a double whammy look at what the plot's looking like uh yeah i think that's it chaps it's time to say the thank yous so first of all as always it is thank you to my patrons it is entirely down to them that these vlogs are still happening and so huge cheers to the monday clubbers an outstanding bunch you really are you really are it's incredible and as always thank you to everybody else who watches thank you for putting up with my ramblings for watching week in week out cheers to everybody. See you next week.